I think what you're talking about there becomes an excuse for not achieving anything. I'm a victim, it's not my fault I'm here, I come from a low income family, um, I'll never go to college, therefore I don't have to really apply myself. And I meet people all, all the time that would say, um, I've gone out of my way to take all the struggle away from my kids. Um, I don't want them to have to experience what I experience. And I'll ask, and this is, this is a story from um, probably two months ago, so how's that going? Well, I have, I have two sons and they both live in the basement. One is 23, one is 27, and I don't see any way they're ever going to be able to move out. So this particular uh, you know, parent, the, the father, took all the struggle away from the kids and, and with the best of intentions, thought he was doing amazing things. And, and so what we need to get at is to, to embrace this concept of struggle is actually really good and trust it. And, and if I back all the way up, so this isn't something I just came up with. Uh, when I was seven years old, I was approached by a neighbor, um, unsolicited, and she asked, would you be willing to pull weeds in my garden for 25 cents an hour? And back then, 25 cents, I could buy two candy bars and have change. I mean, it was worth a lot back then. And so I started doing that. It was hard work. And I was thinking, you know, every couple of weeks I go over and do this, there's got to be a better way, even though I really appreciated this. And I grew up in Spokane, Washington, and we had a lot of snow back then in the winter times. And, and I started asking folks, hey, can I shovel your driveway and sidewalk? And I would get 50 cents to do that, and it would take me only about a half hour to do each one. So I just fourfolded my money. And then next I got a paper route, and then I had a couple of paper routes, and then that just kept going. So I started on what I'm calling this value creation cycle. So I would struggle to get a capability which would build my confidence, and I wouldn't stop there. I'd use that to actually create value. And, and then eventually um, a dishwasher, a busboy, and a cook. And I came from a low-income family. I was actually kicked out of the house the beginning of my senior year in high school. And it was a non-event because I was already not only financially competent, I was financially independent. A non-event for me to get my own apartment two days later. I spent one night in my truck, no big deal. It was one of the best things that ever happened to me, you know, going through that. Uh, but again, starting at seven years old, embracing this value creation struggle cycle, there was nothing I thought I couldn't accomplish. And I didn't feel like a victim when that happened to me. It was kind of a toxic and dangerous environment. You know, the family environment I grew up in, I have a younger brother in and out of prison four times before I lost touch with him intentionally, um, and a lot of other family members that just really weren't good people. So even with all of that going on, this outside world of creating value and taking bigger and bigger steps each time saved me. In, in the biggest possible way. And my, my, my siblings, um, some of them didn't fare so well uh, because they stayed in that environment and they didn't have this external value creation way of looking at the world. So it, it saved me and I think it can save a lot of kids. These days when you think about struggle, right? I, there's some ways I don't like that word because I think of struggle sessions from you know communist China or you know, other, other places, but. Sure. Um, but that's very different. You make the distinction between struggle, healthy struggle, and trauma, which you know you've talked, to, you've you've experienced, and frankly, a lot of people have experienced and have to deal with. So, kind of explain that distinction. I think it's very important. Yeah, healthy struggle would be I want a capability. It's going to be a lot of work to get it. You know, I think early on, um, I'm on my seventh business that I've started from scratch. One of them was an FAA repair station, and I had never written an FAA repair manual before. I'd never had interfaced with the government, but I went through the struggle of figuring out how to get that capability. I built my confidence, and I created even more value from that. That's an example of an adult going through a healthy struggle. For a child, a healthy struggle could be just learning how to uh, make and manage money. You know, how do I earn it? How do I save it? How do I give it? How do I share it, et cetera? So this is a capability that they'd, they'd want to go after. So that, those are examples, you know, you know, simple examples of healthy struggles. Now trauma is something that happens that's not, that's not good. Uh, you know, a lot of kids are abused as an example. That, that's not good. Uh, you know, a, a, adults can run into terrible situations. They could get, you know, mugged or, uh, you know, something that they, they struggle through in the aftermath of all of that. That's not a healthy struggle. Um, but I, I also believe that every single struggle, whether it's healthy or unhealthy, uh, can be used to create more value in the world. It can be leveraged to create more value. 
Healthy is the ideal. On the unhealthy side, it allows you to understand uh, when other people are going through the same thing and help them through it, which I think is wildly valuable. You know, I don't know why this is, I keep thinking about this, but when you keep talking about creating value, I can't help but associate it with money. But that's not what you're talking about, right? And that, that's what I, I mean, it could be, right? It could be. But it's, it's actually a much bigger concept. It's like, can I'm creating something that will be good for others, good for the world, good for your community, right? And sort of focusing your life around that, that's what value creation means. It, 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 I've got that right, right? Yeah. Um, you, you, you do. And when I think about value creation, there's, there's three main buckets, and we talk a lot about this in the book. There's material value creation, there's emotional energy value creation, and there's spiritual value creation. And so figure out which bucket or combination of buckets that you want to create value in. And a lot of folks would say that time is the scarcest commodity, you never get it back. And for me, uh, for decades now, the scarcest commodity on the planet is positive emotional energy. When it's running on nine or 10, all kinds of bad things can happen. Obstacles come up, no big deal. I'm gonna blow through it and it's gonna be amazing. When it's running on one, you, know, you get a flat tire and it ruins your week. And so I, I think that's probably the most powerful bucket of value creation because it supercharges everything if you can maintain high positive emotional energy. And to, and to take it a little bit further, when you interact with groups, are you the person that takes the energy out of the room or do you give it? And so I think about my co-author, Scott Donald, in this book, and he's the kind of guy with this amazing positive energy. He wants everybody to win, and I just watch everybody gravitate towards him. That's fantastic. So he's generating positive emotional energy. 